Greetings, friends. Welcome to CTUCC Conference Cast for May 17th, 2012, the regular podcast of the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you may be on life's journey at this very moment, you are welcome here. We begin this week's conference cast with this meditation from your podcast host, Eric Anderson, the Minister of Communications and Technology. In the first chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, Luke's account of the early years of the Christian church, Peter tells the assembled followers of Jesus that they need to replace Judas Iscariot's abandoned place among the Twelve with someone else who had accompanied them. So they propose two candidates, Joseph, Barsabbas, and Matthias. And then they cast lots, and thus choose Matthias. There are plenty of odd things about this little story. Why did Peter feel so strongly that 12 must remain 12, for example? But oddest of all is this final exercise to select the one who would join that leadership core, the 12 apostles. They considered the candidates. They narrowed the field to two. And then they gambled. They cast lots. They threw the dice. They gambled. Me, I won't gamble for money. I like to tell people that on my only trip to Las Vegas, I broke even. I did it, of course, by never once placing a bet. And I'm very concerned about the extent to which we fund government in this state and others with the losses suffered by unlucky gamblers. I don't think that's a just way to pay for public services. But I will gamble on the leadership of Christ's church. Because, you see, I believe that God has loaded the dice. I'm a mentor in the Thinking About Working for God program, which seeks to help local churches to notice, name, and nurture the young people in their congregations with the gifts and, perhaps, the call to ordained ministry. I hoped I'd be asked to be one of these mentors, because one of the great joys of my ministry was the day I gave the charge to a newly ordained young man named Seth Carey. He had been in my confirmation class some years before, and he was one of those whom I'd asked, have you ever considered entering the ministry? Today, he serves alongside the Reverend Lillian Daniel in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And so last Friday night, I waited to hear what Connor Wood, a Thinking About Working for God member from Southbury, had to say as he addressed the 200 assembled for the youth revival at Liberty Christian Center in Hartford. Unlike many TAWFG members, which the kids incidentally like to pronounce Tawfug, Connor has no doubt about what he wants to do. He wants to be a pastor. Connor's sermon wasn't polished. And neither was that of Gabby Cassano, a member of First Church of Christ UCC in Simsbury. They're just starting, after all. But both were direct, honest, authentic, and their hearts were right there in the right place. Gabby dared to tell just how hard her life is amidst the green lawns and picket fences of Simsbury. Connor dared to assert that church is a place where we can rejoice and mourn, and it's a place where we're at peace with the world. He said that in a society that increasingly finds that difficult to believe. We do our best to encourage people with talent and with generous spirits to take up leadership in the church. And mercifully, God steps in to raise up the people we didn't know, we didn't notice, the ones we didn't expect. During the Tawfig retreat last January, the eyes of all of us adults just brimmed with tears when the Spirit moved among the young people whom we thought we were guiding. And this last Friday night, they filled again because God took charge. Did I call it gambling? Perish the thought. 
Christ's church is in God's hands, and God is good all the time. Here is a prayer for this week. Loving one, we submit our hopes and dreams for Jesus' church to you. We know that its future may not look like its past. We know that our desires for its future may not be yours. Most of all, we know that the church is yours. So guide and bless us as disciples, even as you call, guide, and inspire new generations of apostles. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remember in your prayers this week the family and friends of the Reverend Craig Scott Rayburn, who served churches in New London, Taftville, Norwich, Glastonbury, and Riverton during his career, and was well known as a dean at Silver Lake. He died on May 12th at the age of 74. Please hold in prayer as well the family and friends of Jelana Saladi, mother to the Reverend Kent Saladi, Florida Conference Minister and a former pastor and conference staff member here in Connecticut. She died on Sunday, Mother's Day, at the age of 84. In the news this week, with Pentecost murmurs of voices and a flash of inspirited fire, and then the raising of inspired song, the spring meeting of the Connecticut Conference began last Saturday. Keynote speaker, the Reverend Lillian Daniel, pastor of First Congregational Church UCC in Glen Ellen, Illinois, offered a challenge to the UCC. Here's my word for the UCC. You can be open-minded and still know what you think. You can be accepting of other people's ideas, but still willing to articulate your own. You can rejoice in the many diverse paths to God, but still invite your neighbor to church. Just say it. To Daniel, the self-constructed spirituality of those who call themselves spiritual but not religious runs the risk of being like cut flowers, deprived of roots and sustenance. It's easy to play by the rules of religion in which you write your own script. Much harder to find meaning in the words of a book that we did not get to write from ourselves from a radically different time. Easy to create God in your own image and just follow her. Harder to work with the God who created you and for some reason she did not ask for your instructions. So why does church matter? She concluded... Here's how it works for me and why church matters. Four things. Grounded in tradition. Centered in worship. Called to serve. And free to dream. Amen. During the meeting, conference delegates voted to ratify changes to the United Church of Christ Constitution, which will markedly simplify the denomination's governing structure, reducing five ministry boards with nearly 300 seats to one with just over 50. Though most who addressed the meeting opposed the change, the measure passed by a four-to-one margin. Search Committee Chair the Reverend Gordon Rankin had a particular phrase on his mind in reporting on the conference minister's search process. I have a young woman with whom I regularly do mission work, and her response to most everything is, it's all good. And that's my search committee report to you today. (laughs) It's all good. So we are doing the good work right now of writing a conference profile. We are doing the good work of having a subcommittee of the board and the search committee writing a job description. Now, I will tell you the truth. A couple months ago, in my heart of hearts, my hope was with regards to that work, my message today would not be it's all good, but would have been it's all done. (laughs) It's not, but it's all good. (laughs) 
The environmental ministry team honored nine churches with Green Church Awards. Chester, Darien, Glastonbury First, Hamden Spring Glen, Gilead, Middletown South, Mystic, Windsor First, and Woodstock First. Delegates had the difficult task of selecting from a long list of great workshops. Some were privileged to see the premiere of Columbia Stories, a 10-minute video about storyteller Valerie Tutson's visit to that troubled South American country last August. Inspired by the stories of how this entire community had stood on faith and survived the war, we got to see their community school, the high school that's still in development, and to hear their plans for more community development. We left Las Palmas inspired by their faith and their wisdom and wondering how in the world we might be able to partner with them to help their future dreams come true. The full video is on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ctucc. On Friday night, over 200 young people and advisors filled the great sanctuary of Liberty Christian Center in Hartford with energy, excitement, and hunger for the Spirit. And here's Connor Wood of Southbury on why church matters. It's a place where we can rejoice in the morning, and it's a place where we have peace with the world. It's a great place to be. Gabby Cassano observed that the well-groomed lawns and white picket fences of Simsbury can be deceptive. The evening concluded with a masterful liturgical dance from Liberty Christian's Jack R. Henderson, a living, breathing, flowing, leaping embodiment of why church matters. For all the current headlines, visit us at ctucc.org slash news. Civil rights leader and Georgia Congressman John Lewis comes to Faith Church in Hartford on May 20th. Hartford Seminary Scott Thuma will speak to conference clergy about the other 80% on May 29th in Newington. Give Squared has a retreat on May 31st. Silver Lake is looking for golfers to play for God at the Silver Lake Golf Tournament in Middlefield on June 5th. As the sun finally shines a little longer this spring, imagine your bare feet greeting the warm sand between your toes. Imagine the fireflies sparkling along the tree line above the campfire. Hear the singing floating over the hill from the waterfall chapel. Revel in the delight of discovering a new best friend in the bunk above you. In your imagination, you're at Silver Lake already for a week-long outdoor ministry experience that changes lives and makes friend-making easy. Greet God in God's backyard at Silver Lake this summer. Learn more and register at www.silverlakect.org. God is working through all the people who Fill our lives with hope and care and grace. There's still room to register, but hurry, we're filling up. We look forward to welcoming you to Silver Lake, your conference center. Back, watching the fireflies. Farther out into the summer, there will be a three day course in the basics of Christian education at Hartford Seminary, June 11th through 13th, taught by Chuck Erickson. National Youth Event attendees have two orientation sessions coming up, one on June 13th, another on June 26th. The Craigville Colloquy runs July 16th through 20th. You can always find out what's coming up in the Connecticut Conference by visiting us at ctucc.org slash events. And that brings this conference cast to a close. 
Thanks to you for listening and to GarageBand for our music. Primary funding for Conference Cast comes from your congregation's gifts to our church's wider mission, basic support, changing lives through the United Church of Christ. This is Eric Anderson, Minister of Communications and Technology for the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ, praying that your days this week may be filled with the presence, the guidance, and the grace of God.